Number nine, let's get to Number it. Number nine would be that there are no explicit verses in any scriptural text, especially the Bible, that say so. Now, God, when he speaks of things, when he talks of his own characteristics and who he is, he is very, very explicit. For instance, in, in Isaiah 46 and 9, G, uh, God says that I am God and then there, no, there is none else. I am God and there is none like me. Uh, no explicit texts say that Jesus is God. Now, there, there are a couple of, of directions we can go with this one. Um, but actually, notice what he said. No scriptural text, especially uh, the Bible. Well, does he think that we believe that there are other books besides the Bible that testify to the deity of Christ? I mean, does he mean church fathers? Okay, well, the church fathers are deriving their beliefs from the writings of the New Testament, including the Old Testament. So that was kind of incoherent. No scriptural text, which I, uh, I assume he means inspired scripture, especially the Bible. Well, that statement implies that we're looking to more than the Bible as an inspired source telling us who Jesus is. But, but, but what about the Bible? I mean, as, as, far yeah. as, as, far as, as far as explicit, right? Yes. We have, pl we, we have plenty, right? Yeah, precisely. Just take the, the passage we, we just looked at a few moments ago. Yeah. Uh, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. So what, yes. what's the Word? The Word was God as the to word His essence, eternally God, God in nature. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And, and read the rest the of the passage. This is exactly. talking about Jesus. So God became flesh and dwelt among us. How could that be any more explicit? Precisely. In fact, let's also remind the audience who's watching this, he didn't say no explicit reference from the mouth of Jesus. Mm -hmm. He said scriptural text. So if someone says, oh, I see you're misrepresenting his argument. You know, that's John, but he didn't say John. Actually, no, go back and listen to what he said. No explicit scriptural text. He didn't qualify it. So that means when he makes such an assertion, he's inviting us to look at, at the Bible as a whole to see whether the Bible does testify to the deed of Christ. You mentioned John 1.1. 1, 1. Now, let me just quote an Old Testament passage. You know, we, we have plenty in the New Testament, and I can just mention the verses for people to go back and read. If not, we can look at a few of them, depending on the time. But here is a prophecy. Over 700 years before the birth of our blessed Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, this prophecy was uttered by the prophet Isaiah by inspiration from the Holy Spirit. Isaiah 9, verses 6 to 7. Remember the first objection, right? God cannot be born. God cannot be born. Now, here's a prophet writing 700 years before the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, by inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Notice what he says, David. For a child will be born to us. A child will be born to us. A son will be given to us. Notice he's a child born, but he's already a son who shall be given. The government will rest on his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God. In Hebrew, it's El Gibor. That, that title, El Gibor, is a title given to Yahweh himself, Yahweh God Almighty, in the very next chapter of Isaiah. And I'll read that in a moment. But let me finish the verse. Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father. Or more lit literally, Father of Eternity. Meaning that this child, who's the Mighty God, is the source of eternity. Meaning the source of life. The source of eternal life. The one who gives eternal life to his followers. And that's exactly what the New Testament teaches concerning our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In fact, it says that in John 1.4. John 1.4 says, in him was life, and that life was the light of men. Wait, so the prophet Isaiah agrees completely with the Gospel of John. 100% that he is God and that he is the source of life. Because aviad, the Hebrew term, literally means father of eternity. And Father means the source of eternity. And Jesus, eternity created, flows from Jesus him. created all things. Yes, right? precisely. All right, uh, let me read another passage here. This one will come from the Apostle Paul, since no, no text explicitly declares that Jesus is God. Uh, Philippians chapter 2, starting at verse 5. Have this attitude in yourselves, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, although he existed in the form of God did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a bondservant and being made in the likeness of men. Amen. Now, over and over again in these passages, we see Jesus is God. Jesus takes on a human nature. He's born. And yet we see that there's a distinction within God, right? So he's in the form of God. And yet you read more about God in this passage 
that's distinct from Jesus. Exact, in now, fact, verse 9 even says, God highly exalted him. So God is exalting Jesus who exists in the form of God. That sure sounds like two divine persons in my book. So we have, so here we have Isaiah agreeing with John and agreeing with the Apostle Paul. Uh, but since Muslims might say, Muslims might not say, like, uh, like Joshua Evans uh, does, well, there's, there's, just, there's just no text here. They might try and reinterpret a lot, of, a lot of these passages. Let me give one, and I'll start with the Quran here. Right? Uh, and and as, the, as these shows go on, we'll, we'll probably do this more and more. But let me read a passage from the Quran, just so you can get an idea of who God is according to Islam. Chapter 57 of the Quran, I'll read verses 1 through 3. Whatever is in the heavens and on earth, let it declare the praises and glory of Allah, for he is the exalted in might, the wise. To him belongs the dominion of the heavens and the earth. It is he who gives life and death, and he has power over all things. He is the first and the last, the evident and the hidden, and he has full knowledge of all things. So verse 3 says he is the first and he is the last. Allah is the first and Allah is the last. Um, that's a t that, th those are actually two of Allah's 99 names, right? Yes, uh, first and last are two of the 99 names of Allah that cannot be ascribed to any creature no matter how exalted because this would violate a certain aspect of Tawheed which is classified as Tawheed al-Asma wa Sifat. Tawheed al-Asma wa Sifat means the unity of the names and characteristics of Allah. Certain names, certain characteristics belong to Allah and Allah alone and cannot be ascribed to, to no creature no matter how exalted. And now remember, Yusha Evans believes that Jesus was a good Muslim. His followers were good Muslims. Therefore, they must have subscribed to this the understanding and definition of Tawheed, correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay, now explain to me what you're about to show me. <laughs> so, how could they say the following? Well, we can do this with, with many teachings of the Quran where it describes Allah in a certain way because he is God. And then we can find the same thing uh, in the Christian scriptures. We can even find the, the, the same thing said of Yahweh in the Old Testament. Yeah. So, Isaiah 44, uh, so, 6, Isaiah yeah. 48, 12. Yeah. Where Yahweh, the one true God, calls himself the first and the last, just as, just exactly. as we read in the Quran. Yep. And yet, we open up the book of Revelation, we can see why the Apostle John would have said what he said in the opening verses of his gospel. Um, John sees a vision. And beginning in verse 17 of chapter 1, he starts describing what he saw. He says, When I saw him, I fell at his feet like a dead man. And he placed his right hand on me, saying, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. Who's this, Sam? Who, who does this have to be? That's, I am the first and the last. According to the Quran, that's Allah Almighty. And according to the Old Testament, that's Yahweh or Jehovah. Yeah, because he claims to be the first exactly. and the last. Yeah, can't get around. Nothing before him, nothing after him. Precisely. Okay, let's keep reading. Do not be afraid, I am the first and the last, and the living one, and I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore, and I have the keys of death and of Hades. What's going on here? Hmm. When did Allah die, Dave? Well, when did Jehovah die? Can you explain that to me? Well, that would seem to be a, a huge problem for, for notice. It, Joshua didn't come out and say, your, your whole Bible's been corrupt, don't look at any of it. He said, your Bible doesn't make this claim about Jesus. Your Bible doesn't clearly identify Jesus as God. We saw Isaiah in the Old Testament identified a child who would be the mighty God. That's right, child born. We saw Jesus, Apostle John, called Je say that Jesus in the beginning was the Word. The Word became flesh. The Word was God. That's right. We saw the Apostle Paul saying that Jesus was in the form of God. Then he emptied himself and took on a human nature. And here we have Jesus calling himself the first and the last, which both, according to both the Old Testament and the Quran. the Quran is a title of the creator of the universe. Amen. So Jesus claims to be the creator, huh? Now, how long could we go on like this, going to passages where <laughs> Jesus says things that only God can say, or, or passages from other books of the New Testament written by his followers who would claim that he is God? Well, just put it this way. It took me about nearly t two years and teaching once a week in a local church for two and a half hours. It took me two years to exhaust the biblical witness to the deity of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right? So that's, mm -hmm. that's once a week, two and a half hour sessions. Mm -hmm. So almost two years. So, <laughs> what does that there, tell you? So, so we have a lot more we can say, and we'll be bringing up more passages as we continue. But just given the ones we've shared, yeah, we have to wonder yet again, 
has Joshua read these passages? Does, is he familiar with these? If he's a youth pastor and he has not read these passages, then that really disturbs me because what in the world was he doing leading youth mm -hmm. as a Christian minister? Because part and parcel of his position is to teach them the Word of God. Well, how could he teach them the Word of God if he was ignorant of the Word of God? So mm -hmm. that's really troublesome to me that he would not know these passages. Mm -hmm. And if he does know them, then what does that tell us about his integrity? And we, 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 we would have to add, it's not surprising if someone doesn't really know what's in the Bible, doesn't actually understand what Christian doctrine is, doesn't understand really the basics of why Christians believe in the gospel, that he meets a Muslim, he meets a Muslim who starts telling him things, and oh man, I need to leave Christianity, these are such good arguments, right?